If you enjoy the content on this channel, please like and subscribe. Sex, Lies and a Videotape is a 1989 American independent drama film written and directed by Steven Soderbergh. The plot tells the story of a troubled man who videotapes women discussing sexuality and fantasies and his impact on the relationships of a troubled married couple and the wife's younger sister. Sex, Lies and Videotape won the Palme d'Or at the 1989 Cannes Film Festival, making Soderbergh the youngest director to win the award. He was 26 at the time. The film was influential in revolutionizing the independent film movement in the early 1990s. In 2006, the film was added to the United States Library of Congress National Film Registry, deemed culturally, historically and aesthetically significant. The film was written by Steven Soderbergh in eight days on a yellow legal pad during a cross-country trip, although Soderbergh points out in his DVD commentary track he had been thinking about the film for a year. Soderbergh's commentary also reveals that he had written Andy McDowell's role with Elizabeth McGovern in mind. But McGovern's agent disliked the script so much that McGovern never even got to read it. Laura San Giacomo was also represented by the same agency and had threatened to leave that agency in order to be able to play Cynthia. Soderbergh was reluctant to audition McDowell, but she later surprised him, getting the role after two extremely successful auditions. The role of John would have been played by Tim Daly, but delays in completing the financing for the film led to Peter Gallagher getting the role instead. With a budget of only $1.2 million, a week of rehearsal and a month-long shoot in August of 1988 was all Soderbergh could afford. He would later call it the only movie I've ever made where I felt like I had all the money and all the time I needed. Principal photography took place in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The movie was also presented as a stage play at Hollywood at the next stage from December 13, 2003 to January 17, 2004. A sequel was also announced in 2001 and Catherine Keener was the first actor attached to the project, named How to Survive in a Hotel Room Fire. It was billed by Miramax as an unofficial sequel of sorts. In October, it was announced that the movie would star Julia Roberts, David Hyde Pierce and David Duchovny. However, after the September 11th attacks, the title was changed to The Art of Negotiating a Turn. Miramax head Harvey Weinstein did not like the new title, and consequently, Soderbergh suggested the new title, Full Frontal, under which the film was released. In May of 2020, Soderbergh revealed that he would wrote a sequel during the coronavirus quarantine. In December of that year, he stated that the sequel would be about the two sisters, but 30 years later. One of them had had a child who was about the same age as she was in the original. He also said that McDowell and San Giamo had agreed to reprise their roles. Some interesting trivia notes. The film was playing in Berlin's largest movie theatres when the Berlin War fell. A lot of East Germans crossing over to West Berlin went to see it, expecting Western-style porn. The film was inspired by Steven Soderbergh's own failed relationship. Soderbergh deliberately chose video as a metaphor for distance. He said, video is a way of distancing ourselves from people and events. We tend to think that we can experience things because we watch them on tape. But of course, we weren't there in real life. The role of Anne, which was initially turned down by Elizabeth McGovern, was also offered to Brooke Shields, who also in turn turned it down. Later, the role would be given to Andy McDowell, although Steven Soderbergh thought she was too weak an actress after he saw her work in Greystroke, The Legend of Tarzan and The Lord of the Apes in 1984. One scene includes a videotape confession by one of James Spader's character's past lovers. The director gave the script and video camera to Jennifer Jason Lee so she could tape the speech at home with the help of her then boyfriend. They never got round to it, and once filming began, a crew member was used in a brief role. Now, one of the strengths of Sex, Lies and Videotape is its well-drawn characters and strong performances by the cast. James Spader is exceptional here as the enigmatic Graham, and his portrayal brings depth to the character, who could easily have become a one-dimensional voyeur. Andy McDowell effectively conveys Anne's emotional turmoil, while Peter Gallagher and Laura Sanjiakamo bring complexity to their respective roles. The characters' evolution throughout the film is fascinating to watch as they confront their desires and vulnerabilities. The film also delves into strong themes, including those of sexuality and intimacy. At its core, the film is an exploration of human sexuality and how it affects our relationships. Graham's videotapes serve as a metaphor for the way people often hide their true selves when it comes to their desires and fantasies. It also deals with communication and honesty. The characters in the film struggle with communication and honesty in their relationships. Graham's videotapes force them to confront their innermost desires and secrets, leading to moments of emotional catharsis and connection. I also feel the film delves into themes of isolation and alienation. The characters in Sex, Lies and Videotape often feel isolated and disconnected from one another. Graham's return to the town disrupts the status quo and forces them to confront their own emotional isolation. Look, Steven Soderbergh's direction in this film is absolutely phenomenal. It's notable for its minimalist approach. 
The film was also characterized by its simple, unadorned cinematography and a focus on dialogue-driven scenes. It really plays out like a theater production. The style allows the characters and the interactions to take the center stage, emphasizing the film's exploration of human relationships. This film is a thought-provoking and emotionally charged film that explores the complexities of human relationships, sexuality and communication. With its fantastic performances, well-drawn characters and minimalist style, I can truly see why this film remains an inspirational and influential piece of American cinema. Sex, Lies and Videotape gets a 9 out of 10.